There's lots of myths when it comes to cowboy boots and wearing cowboy boots and who should wear cowboy boots. Well, I picked out three myths for today that I am here to debunk because I don't want any of you having any excuses not to wear cowboy boots. So three myths about cowboy boots right now. Let's get into it. I'm just here to connect ya. And then I'll be on my way. I'm gonna start right off the top here with myth number one. Cowboy boots are uncomfortable. You know, I see these comments on Twitter so frequently. Oh, I just walked half a mile in my cowboy boots. I shouldn't do that again. My back is hurting, my knees are hurting, my feet are hurting. Well, you got, to, you got some bad cowboy boots. Like, you got the wrong size. Sizing is so important, okay? So I have this device right here that I got from eBay. It's called a Brannock device, okay? And any boot store that is worth their salt that is actually worth buying boots from should have this, okay? So basically how it works is you put your foot in here, your heel down here, and then you can see what size you are down here. So you're 12, you're you know, a seven, a nine or whatever, and then you have your width over here, okay? And then you push this up against your foot and then you can figure out what width you are. And there's lots of different widths. There's lots of companies who will only produce D's and double E's. But as you can see here, there's more than just a D and double E. There's triple A to triple E. And then there's even more than that. Like if you guys remember, I looked at a pair of quadruple A boots, which is really narrow. After you get your right size, you gotta think about what kind of insole you want because an insole does make a difference. Hard leather insole is a traditional way, and I think it's the best way. There's also the soft leather insole, which is basically some foam and then a leather lining on top of it. I call it the soft leather insole because it's the best way to do it, in my opinion. Uh, there's lots of cowboy boot companies who have their own names for it, but I'm just gonna continue calling the soft leather insole. And then there's removable foam insoles, and then there's also cloth insoles. I think the hard leather insole is the best because it is the most durable. It will last you forever and also form to your foot, but some people do like the feeling of a foam footbed like sneakers. And there are plenty of companies that do that too, like Ariat and even companies that will do both, like Anderson Bean. Well, that's myth number one. Cowboy boots are the most comfortable footwear in my opinion, hands down. Plus, they're so durable. Myth number two. This is where I might piss some of you guys off. Before we do that, I just really want to thank Tim'sBoots.com, you know, they got so many great boots, including the Blackjack, the Cowtown. They have it all. And you can customize your choices, right? You can choose your size, your width, like they'll even have the narrow width. You can choose your toe shape. There's lots of options that you have. And at Tim'sBoots.com, they're making it possible for you to get boots. Myth number two, cowboy boots are not inherently American. <sighs> oh shit, oh he said it. I will say that we do have some of the best cowboy boot makers in the world in America. Texas Traditions with Lee Miller. You look at Lisa Sorrell with the inlay and the artwork that she can do. You look at Blackjack and the factory boots that they can make. Like we have some of the best cowboy boot makers in this country, but they're not inherently American. Like they didn't come from here. Like so many things in America didn't come from here. We just attract the best. It's just the way that it is. They descend from other types of boots worldwide. Most, like the sister, the closest cousin to the cowboy boot is the vaquero boots. The vaquero, the Mexican boots, okay? This is what the cowboy boot was based off of in the 1850s after the Civil War when folks were going west and they needed a more durable boot. The bootmakers were looking at the Mexican cowboy boot, which is the Vaquero boot, and they designed it based off of that when folks were moving west and they needed something to hold up to the conditions out there. But before that, there were the 
European riding boots. This is a French riding boot from the 13th century. And then you also have this boot, which was worn by jousters. You can kind of see the little spurs that they have there too. So European riding boots uh, came before Vaquero boots and even before the jousting boots with the spurs and everything, you had boots that were used by the Mongols. The Mongols and the Huns are said to be the first makers of cowboy boots because they were such talented horsemen and horsewomen. Like they did so much on horseback that gave them an advantage in battle. Uh, here is what the Mongol cowboy boot looks like. That's what it looks like. You can see the similarities there. And here's another example uh, where they're leather lined, but in between the two layers of leather, you can see that there's a little bit of uh, metal there, like metal mesh to protect the legs during battle. Pretty cool, huh? There are some companies that will say, there are no cowboys in China. Well, there kind of are and were in North China and Mongolia. Uh, especially during the Wan Dynasty when the Mongols controlled China in the 13th century and before that. And they were doing the job too. Like they had, they had cattle, they had sheep, they had goats. So they were nomadic and they had to herd all of those animals with them. So they were doing the job and some still do today. Sorry, but that's a myth and I just debunked it. All right, myth number three. Here we go. This is the last myth that I have and I got a call from Jason last week that actually really helps explain this. Hey Jeremiah Craig, this is Jason. I had a question. Do you have to be country or even listen to country music to wear cowboy boots? Just a good pair of Justin boots at Ranching Home in Kennewick, Washington. I really love. I've tried different pairs. I've tried Ariats one size better than the other foot and I tried, I tried a pair of Justin boots and they fit perfect 10 and a half D but I just I'm really not into country music I like a few songs but I want to know in your opinion would it be okay for me to wear cowboy boots and not even like be into country music I mean is that okay thank you for the call Jason myth number three Jason just led me into it here you don't have to be a certain type of person to wear boots. You don't have to listen to country music. You don't have to be a cowboy. You don't even have to live in the country to wear cowboy boots. This is the biggest myth of them all. And it just is such a shame because the sneaker industry, so many other industries are just running away with market share because so many people want to put cowboy boots in their little boxes. And some boot companies are the biggest producers of this myth. Like, there's so many that are out there, we only make cowboy boots for real cowboys. And that alienates so many of you who aren't cowboys and alienates me too. Like, I'm like, okay, I won't buy your boots then. If you don't want me to wear your boots, then screw you. Basketball sneakers are not just for basketball players. How many dads and moms out there are buying sneakers, but not out on the basketball court every day? Do you hear basketball players giving people shit who are, who are wearing sneakers, but not playing basketball? I never hear it, because these companies are rolling in the dough. Why can't the cowboy boot companies roll in dough too? I'm done with it. Athletic shoe companies want everybody to buy their products and it's time for a similar perspective about cowboy boots. You can be anyone with any lifestyle and wear cowboy boots. There, I said it. Myth three debunked. That's just me. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. I wanna know if you're angry at me or if you feel like I'm just preaching to the choir here. Slash wears Anaconda boots. Totally, Mark Dodson. Yes, it's so rock and roll. In Texas, surgeons wear them in the OR with their scrubs, 100% cowboys. I see that on, uh, on social media all the time and I love it. I love it. He was also in, uh, what was it, in Supernatural? You guys see Supernatural? You're not Dr. Sexy. Dr. Sexy wears cowboy boots. <laughs> Aiden says, I came across a company recently that put out a statement that 
on their website saying that if you're going to wear boots in the city, don't waste their time. Bullshit. Bullshit. I agree. Bullshit. Why would you do that? It is such a stupid move. Don't you believe in those cowboy boot myths? They can be comfy if you have the right fit. I don't care who you might be. You can wear cowboy boots freely. Yeah, it's a free country. I don't care who you are. Wear those cowboy boots. You know what I'm saying? Don't let anybody stop you.